Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be creating a holiday card and I'm going to be doing some paper piecing. I haven't done this in quite a while and it's one of my favorite ways to dress up an image. I'm going to be using the new Candyland paper pack which has some really great holiday designs and I really love the color palette. And I'm also going to be using our new Pure Innocence stamp. So this is called Holiday Cheer and these are one of my favorite images to do the paper piecing with just because it's a lot of fun to dress them up and change the look of the clothes they're wearing. So anytime I paper piece an image, I always like to stamp it out on my white cardstock first because I don't always do the entire image with the paper piecing. I like to color portions of it as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this stamped out with my Extreme Black ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. And then I'm going to stamp the same image onto some of the pattern papers from that paper pack. And that's what I'm going to use to decorate her clothes. I did stamp out and cut some of the pieces off camera just because it does take a little bit of time since this involves fussy cutting. You're going to need to use your scissors to cut out all of the different pieces so that you can piece them back together. So there is one additional element that I need to stamp and cut so I left that one for the video so I could show you how I do it. So I have that Candyland paper pack and I've already picked out the pattern paper I want to use which is this colorful polka dot and this is the same one I used on her toque as well which I already have cut and stamped right there on the screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp the center area of this image, which is her jacket. I'm not worried about stamping the top or the bottom because I'm going to be cutting out the middle area and that's the only part that we're actually going to use. So I have my little scissors here. I like to use a smaller size of scissors to do this type of cutting. And I'm just going to trim around the main part that I want to cut out. And then I'm going to use my scissors and very carefully trim that out. So anytime I'm doing paper piecing, I always like to keep the main element, which is going to be in behind, a full part and then I can layer on top of that. So you'll see here I'm actually going to cut out this whole entire piece of her jacket even though I'm only going to use the collar and the very bottom piece of it. But this is going to allow me to layer that stripe piece directly on top and it just makes it a lot easier to piece together. So I'm just going around the image and cutting it out right on the stamped line until I have the entire piece cut. And it's always easier if you kind of turn your paper rather than turn your scissors. So now that I have that one cut out I have all of the little pieces that we need to piece her together. Now the last thing I want to do before I start to glue everything down is I like to take a black pen and I like to just go around the edges of the cutout image and this is going to allow me to add the black ink and cover up that white core of the pattern paper. This just makes it look completely finished and it makes it look like an entirely stamped image once we've put it all back together. Okay so now before I start to add all of the pattern paper I want to die cut her with the die so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to do the coloring on this image before I add any of the paper piecing. I always find it's easier to color it first because you can kind of be a little bit messy with your coloring. You don't have to worry about going over the areas that you're going to cover with the pattern paper. And it just makes it a lot easier to get that color down first before you start to glue all of the pieces on. So I use the pattern paper pieces as a guide for what kind of colors I wanted to use for the coloring. I want to make sure everything is going to match nicely when I put it all back together again. I'm not going to be doing any paper piecing on any of the shopping bags or her boots, so I picked out colors that I knew would coordinate nicely with the pattern papers that I'm going to be adding to her outfit. So for the presents, I'm starting off with my favorite grouping of aqua colors, which is BG11, BG32, and BG15, and I'm coloring in some of the presents that she's holding. And you can see there, like I mentioned before, I'm not being careful. I colored right over top of that mitten. But we're going to cover that with the pattern paper so it's not going to matter that we kind of went out of the lines with that color. I also added that same aqua color to the top of her boots. And now I'm going in with some green colors. This is my favorite green combination which is YG01, YG23 and I'm also bringing in YG17 to add a little bit more contrast to the bottom of those shopping bags. I really, really love the colors in this new paper pack because I am one who tends to kind of lean towards non-traditional Christmas colors. I do love a red and green Christmas card, but I really love the kind of mix of aqua, pink, red, and green. I just think it's a beautiful combination and it's definitely my go-to on holiday cards. So I finish off the gift bags by coloring one of them in pink to kind of match the pattern paper we're using. And then I'm also coloring in her boots with some gray marker as well. Once I have those done, we have finished all of the coloring and now we can start the fun of paper piecing all of her clothes on. So when I do paper piecing, I like to use a liquid glue. I'm using a glue pen here, which is really easy to add the glue to the back of the pieces. Some of them are quite small, so it gets a little bit difficult to add them on, but anytime I have smaller pieces, I do use tweezers and that helps a bit. So I'm first adding the base layer of her jacket on, and this is going to be the collar and the bottom piece. 
We're not going to actually see the center area once we add the striped piece on top. I'm also doing the same for her toque. I'm adding that one on, but we're going to add another piece to this as well. So we're only going to have that polka dot detail on the very top of her hat. This is the kind of the brim of her hat and we're using the pink and white snowflake pattern paper. And I'm adding that there to the top of her hat. And then I'm also going to add the center of her jacket, which is going to be that striped paper. So you can see here by adding all of the stamping onto these different papers and then cutting them out with scissors, we're easily able to kind of put them all back together and make it look like the entire complete image, but we've actually used a bunch of different patterns together to create a really unique look. To finish off her legs, I'm adding the same pattern paper we used for the top of her hat onto her leggings, and then I'm going to finish it off by adding some mittens onto her little mitten areas there. And for those, I used the green and white polka dot pattern paper and I'm just gonna add those onto her hands there. And these mittens are super teeny tiny, so I did use my tweezers to help me kind of put those in place. Once I had those on, I realized I forgot to do the cuffs of her jacket, so I decided just to keep it really simple and add a little bit of aqua color to those. And now we have our paper pieced image complete. I love how she turned out with all of the different patterns on her clothing. And now we need to create a background for her so that we can set her into a winter scene. So I've set her aside and now I have a piece of cardstock here and I'm adding some ink directly to this cardstock. This is Peacock Feathers Distress Ink and I'm adding quite a bit of this onto this panel. I want it to be super dark in color and really saturated with that peacock feathers. Once I have that on there, I am gonna change it up and add a little bit of blue color to the outside as well, just to kind of bring in a little bit more of a blue to kind of blend in with that aqua color. So anytime I'm doing that, I like to use Mermaid Lagoon with the peacock feathers. I just love how these two go together. And I really love the definition it added to the outside area of this panel. I am going to be adding some snow hills to the very bottom, which is why I'm not worried about making sure that ink goes all the way down the panel. I'm just adding it to the areas that I know we're going to see on the finished card. So now that I have that done, I wanna add some detail to this background. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put some water on here. So I'm adding some water into my hand and kind of flicking it onto the panel. And since we use distress inks, they are going to react with the water and they're going to create that look that you kind of see forming where we have a little bit of that water splotch look. And I love that for snow for the background. Now, once I get that base layer down with the water, I like to go in with some white acrylic paint that's mixed with water, which just makes it a little bit thinner. And I like to flick it over top of the panel with a paintbrush. This just is going to give us some really bright, vibrant snow, and I love the look of having the water effect in the background and then the really bright snow on top. I let that completely dry, and now I'm going to start to assemble my scene. So I used the New York Skyline die, and I die cut it from a piece of white cardstock, and then I colored in the area that I'm going to put onto the card with some um, gray Copic marker. I added some liquid glue to the back of this, and I'm going to adhere this directly onto the panel. I want it to look like the city is in the background behind the girl image since she's carrying a bunch of shopping bags and I thought this image would work perfectly for that. So I added it to the card front, I trimmed off the extra, and then I took that same acrylic paint and I'm adding the splotches of paint directly over this as well. I want it to look like the snow is falling in front of the buildings in addition to the sky behind them. For the snow at the bottom, I created two snow hills using the stitched snowdrifts dynamics. And I'm going to layer this directly over that city area first so you can see we completely covered up the bottom portion where we didn't have any color added. So I'm adding this one on first and trimming off the extra and then we're going to add the second snow drift directly on top and this is where we're going to add our girl image and make her look like she's standing in the snow. Okay so I decided to add a little bit of dimension to this image so I did add some foam adhesive to the back of her and I'm just kind of positioning that front snow bank just to kind of figure out where I want her to be standing and I'm going to adhere her directly to the card. Now for the front snowbank, we're going to need to add foam adhesive to that one as well, so it layers properly over the girl. So I'm going to add it to this, and I'm going to make sure not to put anywhere her boots are, since we are going to kind of tuck her down into that snow drift. So I'm just going to adhere this directly on there and trim off the excess, and then we can move on to our sentiment strip. So for this, I'm going to be stamping Merriest Christmas onto a strip of white cardstock that I've die cut with the Hearts in a Row Horizontal Dynamics, and I'm just stamping this on here with black ink. I'm stamping it over towards the left since I want it to be coming off the left hand side of the card and I'm going to adhere this directly onto the card base but before I do that I want to add a little bit of sparkle because what is a holiday card without some sparkle? So I'm going to be using our new Silver Ritz Sparkle cardstock. This is a gorgeous collection of silver sparkle cardstocks. You can see here we have four different shades. 
I'm going to be using the second one in, which is a really bright, beautiful silver color, and I thought it paired nicely with the gray buildings that we've added in the background. So I've die cut this with that same hearts in a row horizontal banner die, and I'm going to layer the sentiment strip directly over top of this and have a little bit of that silver kind of peeking out down the bottom and to the side, and then I'm going to adhere this directly to the card base. I love having that little pop of sparkle cardstock underneath the sentiment. It doesn't take away from the scene, but it adds just enough to kind of give it that holiday feel. I trimmed off the extra with my scissors, and now we have this completed panel ready to go onto a card base. Now I do want to add a little bit more detail to this before we're finished. And the first thing we're going to do is add buttons to her jacket. So I'm going to be using some Doodlebug Swimming Pool Glitter Sprinkles. And I knew going into this that I was going to do this with these buttons, which is why I left them completely plain. So I'm going to go in first with a Copic marker that kind of matches the enamel dots that we're going to add, just in case you can kind of see through them since they have a little bit of a clear finish. So I colored them in and then I'm adding the exact same color to all three of the buttons. And I love the dimension that it adds and I love how these match the sky that we've created in the background. Having that sparkle detail in there, which is kind of hard to see in the video, but is definitely there, really matches the snowy sky that we've created and really ties the whole scene together. So now before we get to our last decorative element, I'm going to add the panel to my card base. So I'm using a Razzleberry card base, which kind of matches the pink colors that we've used in the image. And like I mentioned before, these are my favorite for Christmas colors. I love the pink with the aqua and the green. I just think it's such a pretty combination. So I'm adding this directly onto that card base, which is an A2 size card measuring four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And now I'm going to add a few more finishing touches to the design. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some of these clear droplets to the sky area. I love that they kind of mimic the look of snow and add a little bit of dimension. So I'm actually adding quite a few of these into the sky area. I'm kind of laying them out and getting an idea of where I want them. And then to adhere them onto the card, I just use matte multimedium and my tweezers to help put them in place. Once I have those all adhered, we have some really fun dimension in the sky. And the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of detail to the snow area in the bottom. I love the look of the stitch detail on the snow, but I thought with the sky, since we have a lot of that falling snow and we have those gems kind of giving us a bit of dimension, I felt like the snow at the bottom was a little bit too plain for the scene that I had created. So I'm going to be using some snowflake paste, which is an embossing paste that when you first add it on, it looks really opaque and white, but as it dries, it turns into a beautiful sparkle dimensional snow drift. It looks just like actual snow and I love the effect that it adds to a card. So I'm taking my palette knife and just very carefully adding it along the top of the snowbank. I'm not being super careful, I am letting it kind of drip down a little bit to make it look like actual snow. And I use the end of my tweezers for the top snow drift just to kind of get around the image since I didn't want to get snow onto her gift bags. I did decide though to add snow to the top of her hat just to kind of look like snow was falling directly onto her snow hat and that is going to finish our card. So now we have this really bright and fun colorful winter design where we have the buildings kind of tucked into the background and we have this really great image in the front that we've added a ton of color to by doing paper piecing as well as the coloring. I love creating holiday cards and I hope you got some ideas for ways to use our new products on your next card design. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video and I hope to see you in another one soon. Thanks so much for watching.